fans out there, another episode of Soul TV brought to you by Soul Wolf Energy. I want to talk to you today about um, what you guys, the customers, the commercial customers, the homeowners, things that you need to look for, okay? Uh, aside from the obvious that everybody's going to tell you about on YouTube or just by the water cooler, wherever, right? Here's the thing. Uh, Monday, Ceneva, which is a company that makes solar modules or panels, for most of you know, um, filed bankruptcy. You know, uh, a a few weeks ago, Sungevity filed bankruptcy. There's going to be a lot of this. As I said uh, a few, uh, about a year and a half ago, I had called this out. I had called out on the larger leasing companies, how they couldn't sustain their financial model. I also called out these some of these installers, panel companies. You need to not be a CPA, but you need to look at the bottom line and the balance sheet, okay? You need to understand when you're going to commit to a company, and they're going to put, you know, company XYZ's panels on your roof, you need to understand that how financially solvent is that company? You know, so we use companies like LG and Hyundai, companies that are cash flow positive, companies that have been around for 30, 50, 70, 80 years. Now, that's not always a guarantee that the company's going to be in business tomorrow. I mean, I remember Enron, I'm sure you guys do too, but... You know, when it's a publicly traded company, like, I'll give you an example, the inverters and power optimizers we use are Solar Edge. Now, you can go on TD Ameritrade, CNBC, and you can take a look and see that these companies are in the black, right? They're cash flow positive. They have assets. So, this is something that you're going to be able to look forward to in the long term. You're going to see that they're, because they're profitable, that when they offer you a 12-year or 20 or 25-year warranty, there's a great chance they're going to be able to execute against that if, if they need to, okay? We've had some issues with um, some LG panels. Fantastic customer service. For a company as large as LG, we can get one person on the phone that's in charge of that at any moment and say, here's what's going on. They go through our interface through Solar Edge. They can read the panel output on your home through the monitoring app that we have for all of our installs. And they can see if this diode's broken in the panels or whatnot. I mean, it's fantastic te technology that we have. But the fact of the matter is that we have accountability. We have a company that's cash flow positive and LG, right? And sustainability. And they have a great name. Uh, you know, so they're, and they're also a very diverse company. So, you know, if the solar industry goes down, they're not going to be harmed because they make refrigerators and watches and cell phones and TVs. I mean, they make, they're in so many different aspects that it's a great diversification so the company most likely can weather an economic storm, right? So these are things that you need to consider as a homeowner or business owner if you're going to put solar panels on your roof because what good is a 20-year warranty? if the manufacturer is out of business next year. Now we can't tell the future, but you can always tell, have a better, uh, you can have advantage no less if you can look at the past is usually a good representation of what the future is going to do as far as their finances. Because if they've been cash flow positive for 40 quarters, 50, 70 quarters in a row, and or if they've weathered the you know 08, economic storm, the 99 storm, and the company's been around since then, there's a great chance that when the next bubble pops, whatever it might be, that they're going to go through that as well, and they're going to come out stronger on the other end, because they're one of the few that made it. So, something that I'm saying here is pretty obvious. However, it's amazing how many homeowners have companies like Tailsun or some, you know, these other companies that have these panels on the roof, because they were talked into by a company. Uh, that told them to put them on because that's that and honestly the reason they were talked into that was because that company probably had a great deal on or on clearance or something or uh distributor said hey listen i've got a couple of cases of these they don't make them anymore this this model they went to a bigger model um we're gonna blow them out at xyz price so you can have them and you the homeowner will end up with them and think great if a homeowner switches panels on you uh, I'm sorry, if a installation company switches panels on you, you may want to ask why. Do some due diligence. Not on just the installer. Now, I understand most installers aren't publicly traded, but you know what? You still have some do some do some you still have to do yeah, some due diligence on the installer. Ask how they're doing. Read the body language. If they're financially solvent, they should have no problem telling you. And it should be pretty clear.
The other side of this is not just the installer, but again, going back to the products going on your roof, the inverters, the optimizers. Let me point out a great fact, actually. Let me point out something. There's a company called Enphase. They make microinverters. It's a different type of solar system. You have a string system, you have microinverters, and you have power optimizers. If you go with a microinverter system and you have Enphase, you should be a little concerned. Enphase in the last year and a half, and this is public knowledge, you can find this anywhere on the internet, has had to have rescue financing, rescue financing, twice in the last two years. This, this, this is a company, if you can read a balance sheet, if you can go through a company's financials like I can, you can see that they're not out of the water, they're not even close to out of the water, that it's almost like a denial. And I'm, I'm going to say this right here, that I think in the next 18 months, Enphase is blown out. It just it files and anything gets acquired by someone else, and I don't know why or who would want to spend the money. I mean, if you can pick up the company 10 cents on the dollar, maybe. Um, this is a publicly traded company. You can go right through the financials, right through the, uh, the, the, K, the 10K, and look. But, you know, the headlines alone should scare most people. Um, on, on them and yet people are still buying their products and salespeople are still out there pushing their products something else to consider if a salesperson comes to your house and starts pushing products on you or a company on you that's not financially sound and says oh yeah the warranty's fine that should tell you everything you need to know about that company don't you think so do some due diligence not on just the installer but the material the company of the materials uh, that you're going to be receiving and having installed in your home because as like we said the warranty is useless if the company is not in business next year or, or 18 months okay um, as prices keep tumbling down here in the solar industry more and more companies are filing bankruptcy they can't make it they can't hack it us installers that have planned for this that have been financially sound and have zero debt in the books aren't worried because some of us can install way, way less per watt and still make it. We'll have, obviously have to cut some fat back and get a little leaner, but we can still make it as a company. Um, and, and there's only a few of us that can do this. So when then that goes to the installer side of things, uh, the cost per watt for them to install, you know, how they run their overhead for their company. You'll see, you'll see an article in um, on greentechmedia.com that was released last week about how the larger companies like like Solar City or, or Tesla, whoever it is, whatever they call themselves now, um, NRG, Sunrun, these larger companies, they're on average 10 to 15 percent more money for the same system that a regional guy would be installing for you because their overhead is just significant it's just it just goes without saying it's significantly more money for them their marketing and everything else they do you know their larger build larger office buildings their numerous automobiles that they have all the people driving around because it's all branding and it's all crucial steps in business no one can deny that but at the end of the day you as the homeowner you know when you have a system put on your house do you really care that the company that put it on has an extra 400 people working for them, because that doesn't mean strength. If you look at the financials of those companies I mentioned, they're actually terrible. So, at the end of the day, you want to pay less for your for your solar system, for your home, or for your business. You want great materials, and you want this all done by companies that can can weather a storm, that can be around in a few more years, and look you in the eye and tell you that that's what's important. So, um, I want to wrap this up. Thanks for another watching another episode of Solar TV brought to you by Solar Wolf Energy. And uh, let us know if you have any questions, comments. We look forward to seeing or hearing from you. Thanks so much.